Good evening, everybody. It is 9.19 p.m., October 2nd, 2017. All right, and we got an extra disturbance on the map within the last hour. Uh, really quick, this one popped up as a big oval shape that went over southern Florida and part of the Keys, actually. That was just a warning area. Just so you know, this doesn't mean storms are forming here. It means that it's an invest area. It means it's an area of concern that they're watching that could possibly develop into tropical depression. That is our first step towards a hurricane. We have tropical depressions, then they transfer into tropical storms, and then the next step would be a Cat 1 storm. So... These are not guaranteed storms. These are areas to watch. We've had this one for a few days now, still at 20% over five days. The reason it doesn't have a 48-hour percentage is because our shear winds are still uh, just down in this area, and they're still just strong enough to not allow anything to form in the next 48 hours. That may change, guys. That's not a guarantee. That's just their, That's an assumption based on the data they have. And we're going to look at a chart now that shows our water vapor and we're gonna try to explain why this disturbance is here why this one is here and why there might be two others to watch out for in the next couple hours and here we are now first we'll look at our area that is noticed here is our twenty percent area over five days you can see the counterclockwise motion right here and the one good thing about this guys is that it's beginning to form and it's half on land and half in the gulf so that is delaying this from being a full-blown tropical depression now if it stays that way chances are it's not going to form at all but if you notice these last couple frames it begins to tug a little bit to the north and that's for a few reasons one is because um, we have this water vapor if you see the pattern of it it goes up through uh, from South Mexico up through Central Mexico then through Texas and then down through Louisiana and then it basically passes to the west of Florida so that's almost like a loop here and, and picture this as like a, a wall, a, a momentum wall. And as this cyclone begins to hit this water vapor wall here, which is also wind, it's beginning to pull up and follow the direction of this. So we may see this cyclone move itself into the Gulf, and that's when we need to worry. That's when we showed yesterday on some of the models. The storm actually formed down here and then went up through the gap and then went towards Florida. Now it's obviously changed. The, uh, the counterclockwise motion is farther to the west, but again, it's beginning to move up towards the Gulf area. And if that center area, the center cyclone area, stays over water, it's definitely warm enough for it to grow. And that'll be the new concern. They're probably worried about this forming here and then coming up and almost riding the coastline and then coming this way. We can see that momentum already with the water vapor. Water vapor is following that momentum wind and that's what we need to look for guys and again it's happening just as those shear winds are letting off we knew the second those shear winds went to the north that this area was going to be wide open uh, for these cyclones to form we have all the storms we have all the water vapor and we have all the warm water we need for these to form unfortunately now i want you guys to notice something else uh... before we point this area out this was the second area that was noticed in the last hour i'm going to explain that in a second but right off the bat, I want you to notice this counterclockwise motion here. And this is south enough. If you notice, this cyclone here is more south than this one. Um, I would not be surprised to see a percentage put on this uh, very shortly. It may even happen overnight. But if the more south we move now, the farther away from that shear wind influence we are. And with those shear winds moving up, you're going to start seeing these cyclones develop here. And this one's obviously developing. And then they might even start a little bit more to the north. Once those shear winds are gone, they're no longer there to influence this stuff. And we have all the ingredients we need for these tropical storms to form. You can see this cyclone. It's going in a perfect circle. Uh, we see uh, some storms wrapping around in a 360 circle. That's... Uh, one of those telltale signs that we always talk about that start these tropical depressions. And again, guys, with those shear winds gone, there's nothing to stop these except for once they form and then making landfall. That's basically the only thing that will stop them once they reach that tropical storm, uh, name storm uh, situation. So we have this one here that's noticed that we really need to watch out for to come back into the Gulf of Mexico. Then we have this second one here that's not yet noticed on the charts but clearly there in a uh, counterclockwise motion pulling in moisture 
uh, that's again those are those signs you look for when you're about to see a tropical depression or an area of interest now they did mark this area like we talked about on our five-day chart here they marked this area and I'm gonna try to explain why if you notice this one storm that's beginning to explode usually when you see that you see more now it doesn't look like there's any counterclockwise movement here but if you follow my mouse guys this water vapor is moving up through Mexico through uh, middle to southern Texas through Louisiana which is getting a lot of storms right now this area of Louisiana and then it's pulling down into the Gulf to the west of Florida now that momentum coming up and then down is moving opposite of this and it may begin to spin this area in a counterclockwise motion and I believe that that's why they have a percentage put on that they think that this momentum is going to be strong enough without the shear wind influence that's moving north clearing this whole area out allowing it to form storms they think it's going to influence this area to begin moving in a counterclockwise motion so we have two areas of noticed interest notice disturbances that's this here half on land half in water if it goes in the Gulf we may have formation and then they have this one that they believe will be influenced by these downwinds and this moving this way it causes an opposite motion and that could be counterclockwise and then we have our third area which may be noticed uh, within the next couple hours down here even further south away from the shear winds that's already beginning to spin and beginning to suck up these storms very concerning area here I'm gonna keep an eye on this I suggest everyone does that follows this stuff very very important to notice when you're seeing a counterclockwise motion especially when you know there's going to be no influence of shear winds that's what we've been waiting for guys that's what they've been talking about at the hurricane center and that's why they always talk about Florida in October unfortunately Florida is one of those states that sticks out way on its own it's not part of the uh, the inner it's got more of a coast out in the ocean than most other states do is basically what I'm trying to say so again we have one we have two up here, then we have the potential for our third one, and then I want you to look at one other area that I've been looking at oh, for the last week, at least, this one area. This system came off of the west coast of Africa, it began to form, and then it stopped, and then it began to form again, and now we see it, if you notice, some of this moisture is being pulled up to the north, and then these low-level clouds are moving down. And that could be enough force, once again, same situation as up here with opposite forces, may begin to spin this in a counterclockwise motion. So again, I'm not predicting these to do so, I'm just showing you the data, I'm showing you what's available now, and what the possibilities could be. This may break up and be nothing, but what I'm seeing right now is it almost trying to do that counterclockwise movement. And if we check... Well, which we're going to if we check the CMC the Canadian model and the European models they both agree that these storms may form there's one here and then there's another one even further to the east closer to the west coast of Africa that is now moving um, on that western belt we always talk about so we guys we have a lot of action going on here those shear winds lifting up are already causing these storms to begin to spin that's what we were uh, warning everyone about to look out for again it could be a week away before we see the formation of storms unless that 48 hour percentage goes up and the way that that would happen is if these shear winds uh, leave the area of the southern states quicker than we thought we're at the second right now those uh, shear winds were expected to move up to the north between the 5th and the 7th, I believe, uh, uh, opening up this entire area. But that may happen sooner than we thought. We're already seeing cyclone formation in the Gulf, basically, and then a little bit south of Cuba, right in this area. So those shear winds are clearly not ripping these apart yet. All right, we'll take a look at our Canadian model first. This is the one that's going to show a uh, very powerful, uh, powerful hurricane uh, basically beginning uh, as a group of storms coming off the west coast of Africa um, move, through, uh, move through the chart right now to show you and there's the one right there that's the one that I've been watching that we just looked at on our NASA MSFC map and if we f move it forward this is what the Canadians believe will happen that's a major hurricane right there guys right next to the Bahamas and then landfall right through central Florida and then possibly reforming again and getting itself way into the Gulf that's not what we want to see but again guys this is just the data I'm bringing you and then that second system I was talking about that we couldn't see on the NASA uh, MF, uh, MSFC map um, is this one right here where the L is and if you watch that 
According to the Canadian model, they believe that is also going to form, but possibly by then there may be forces bringing it up into the central Atlantic Ocean with a third behind it. All right, so guys, again, still a lot of action coming off of West Africa, the area that's supposed to slow down in October, making this area of greatest risk. The Canadians don't see any of these storms forming. That doesn't mean they won't. It just means that their data is not agreeing at the moment. We do see that a little bit of a formation here. Uh, this could be what we were looking at that was forming here and moving down into the South Gulf next to Mexico. Um, according to this chart, it may pull even further south into the Pacific and then reform here. Or if those winds that were curling around through central Mexico, Texas, and Louisiana that we said was going to form this area over here may form a wall and keep this system up in the Gulf. We just don't know yet. We still have a little more time to go before we can see that formation. So once again, really quick guys, we have our two notice disturbances. These are the ones we're watching closely. Uh, I'm seriously concerned about this third one down here that I'm surprised isn't even on this map yet, but we clearly saw that uh, counterclockwise motion here, something to watch, and then we have those two systems here that usually don't get recognized, at least on this chart, until they make it uh, closer to the leeward unless they're Antilles Islands. Those are both, one is about right here, and there's another one coming off of uh, the west coast of Africa now, which were both shown on the Canadian model to form into major hurricanes. That is not a guarantee, it just means the potential is there so here we go one disturbance two disturbances this could be our third there could be a fourth and a fifth so a lot going on in the South Atlantic and the Gulf and the Caribbean and finally I just want to show you guys our uh, mimic chart our water vapor slash wind charts and really quick this is the area of concern for that second disturbance that just popped up they're worried about the water vapor looping up um, over Texas, Louisiana coming to the west of Florida and causing that spin here with those storms we saw exploding. This is that second area, or the first of the two actually, that we've been watching with the 20% over five days. They're not sure whether or not it's going to pass through to the Pacific and become a storm, or if it's going to ride up uh, what seems to ride up the east side of Mexico and then back into the Gulf to reform. Here would be our third disturbance that they didn't recognize yet. Um, in prime area away from the shear winds and in very warm water, I will not be surprised to see this uh, be put as a percentage on that map soon. And then once again, we have that system I've been watching for the last week that came off the west coast of Africa, which is right here. And you are almost beginning to see that counterclockwise motion. Again, we have some of the momentum pulling this to the north, and then we have a, a lower level cloud system moving down to the south. That may be what causes this counterclockwise motion. So again, guys, a lot of areas to watch right now. Once those shear winds are gone, we're going to have a lot to look out for. This area is very, very active. There's a lot of warm water, a lot of storms exploding, and that's just where we're at right now. Uh, tomorrow, I will have a lot more data here. Um, I was hoping that there would be a couple more frames at least from this system here to see if it actually is pulling to the north. Uh, that's going to be our main concern because that was the storm we showed yesterday that formed actually down here rather than moving to the west. It kind of formed here, moved up through the gap, and then right into Florida, right near the panhandle. And that is still an area of concern. That is why Florida is always on target this time of year. It's be it, Guys, it, it's the uh, geography of Florida. It's the re It sticks out very far into the ocean. Um, it doesn't have uh, most of its land inland. It's all exposed to the ocean, and that's clearly why Florida's always at risk. It's just this area that it, it's a target zone, guys, and it's unfortunate, but October is the season or the part of the season to watch for these hurricanes to form and possibly put Florida at risk. Again, all these other areas are at risk, too, but because Florida's part of the mainland, they obviously get more attention. Uh, Puerto Rico... They just don't need anything else. I mean, that's why I'm hoping none of these storms form here because their path would take them more than likely right through this area, once again, putting them at risk. And that's the last thing those poor people need right now. All right, guys, that's all I got for you for tonight. Tomorrow morning, I will absolutely have an update before I head to work. And that's where we're at, guys. I appreciate you staying up with me, and I hope to see you all in the morning. Thanks a lot, guys.